Hi, I'm Ian, I'm a computing science student at the University of Aberdeen, and today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 3.11 in DOSBox. Okay, so before we uh, plow into getting the, the system working for you, uh, I'm just going to show you what it is that we'll have at the end of this video. So you can see here in the taskbar, there's the program manager icon here for for Windows 3.11 users and I've also got that same icon here in my start menu you can see I labeled it Windows 3.11 this is a shortcut to DOSBox with the correct DOSBox configuration file uh, loads up Windows 3.11 in DOSBox and there you go program manager has already appeared and I'm ready to well I haven't found any practical uses for this yet um, but if I did find a practical use, then I would be able to get on with it now. Uh, I, I have installed Microsoft Access 2.0, uh, WinZip 3.2, which is a 32-bit version, uh, requires Win32s, and Microsoft Quick Basic 4.5 as well, which was my first programming language. You'll see now if I exit Windows, then DOSBox exits as well and I get returned to Windows 7. Your first task, if you haven't already, is going to be to download DOSBox. You can find the, the DOSBox website at www.dosbox.com. You can see here I've got it loaded up. And if you go to Downloads and then choose the Win32 installer, the top one from the list, take you to SourceForge. You will then see your download appear. And now that it's downloaded, you're ready to start the install. The install is a very, very simple process. Uh, first, you'll have to accept the license agreements that give you general public license. Next, you can choose whether or not to have a shortcut on your desktop. Um, at this stage, you probably have it there. Uh, leave that ticked, click next. You should then choose where to install uh, DOSBox on your computer. Um, I've already got it installed, so I'm going to create a second installation to, uh, well, for the purposes of this video. You then click install, it will extract, create shortcuts and other things once it's completed. You just click close and you're ready to launch. There are two different ways you can go from here. Uh, one, one way is to use disk images, where essentially the hard drive is contained in a single file in your file system as you see it in Windows 7 or XP or whatever you're running DOSBox on. Uh, the other option is to mount a local directory as a disk drive. And this is the option that we're going to use for two reasons. The first reason is that this is the easier option. And the second reason is that it also allows you to access the file system from the host file system, be it Windows 7, XP or Vista. Now, before we proceed to the next step, you need to make sure you have ready your Windows 3.11 install media and the list of drivers in the description to this video. You should also download each of them and once you've done that, you can uh, move on to the next step. If you haven't done this yet, pause the video and then come back when you have. So it needs to be in a place that you're going to know where it is 
so I chose the root of my C drive. Now if you create a new folder, I'm going to call it DOS Win 311. And then inside this folder, Inside this folder, you're going to want to put all of the files that you've downloaded. So, the most important thing is that inside the Windows for Workgroups setup directory, you're going to have to extract all the disk images and make sure that all the files are in the same folder. Otherwise it's going to ask you to change disk and given that it's not a real disk that's quite a tricky task. So there's uh, 25 seconds remaining on this. Uh, you'll see with the, the drivers, I've put the drivers each in their own directory. Uh, the joystick driver, the video driver and Whilst DOSBox, DOSBox does support IPX networking, I haven't quite figured out yet how to get it to work with Windows 3.1. Now that you have the drivers and the installation media in this directory, you're ready to start DOSBox. You start DOSBox using the icon that's been placed on the desktop, and you'll see this window appear. It looks just like a DOS prompt because, well, it is. Um, but there are some differences, uh, some extra commands to help you in the, the virtual environment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the directory we've just created with all of the installation media and drivers in it. And we're going to mount that as our C drive. So the command is mount. And then the path to the directory you created, I called it DOSWIN311. Will then tell me that drive C is mounted as a local directory, which is correct. And then when I go to C drive, C colon, um, I can type DIR and get a directory listing and see that all of the files that I put there are showing up. Now if I use cd, change directory, and then type the wfw3.1, which is where I put the setup files, and then I type setup, it will launch the Windows for Workgroups 3.11 setup. And press enter, and then enter again for the express setup, and then it will begin to copy files. advantage of using DOSBox over installation on a real machine from the floppy disks is that this is about 200 times faster as it's just copying from the hard drive to the hard drive and a lot quieter as well. actually doing right now is preparing the DOSBox machine to run the graphical window setup. And here it is. license information. Remember that Windows 3.11 is still license 
licensable software from Microsoft, it's not free software. Um, I've received my copy from MSDN, um, where I've been told that I don't need a product key. If you click within the window to capture the mouse, then you'll be able to move the mouse around like so. And you click continue, and then continue again to confirm. Now it performs the real Windows install, copying all the files required into the Windows directory on your hard drive. Well, the Windows directory in the directory on your hard drive, if that makes sense. See, Windows 3.1 is running. 